Holy cow, that's loud. All right, well, we'll get started on time then, right? It's about 10.45. All right, so hopefully you're in the right place. Hopefully there's a clue that you're in the right place that you can see. Um, so welcome. Um, this is, uh, we're going to be talking about D8, uh, D8 migration, uh, specifically the migrate and core uh, modules, as well as extending them. Um, so that if you have a customer contributed module that um, manages some data, we're going to talk about how do you actually write um, migrations to get that data from D6 or D7 into D8. So we're going to talk, we'll do a real quick overview of Migrate and Core. We'll talk conceptually about how migrations work, and then we'll do a real world, an actual example. All in the next three hours. So we're, we're in good shape. All right, so um, I'm Mike. Um, I'm a Drupal uh, trainer and consultant uh, based in Florida. Uh, you can find me usually in Pound Drupal Migrate. Um, you know, most uh, um, 8 to 5, 8 to 6, sometimes in the evenings, uh, East Coast time, if you're interested. And we have Keith. I'm Keith Duchant. I work for uh, Metal Toad Media in Portland, Oregon. Um, last fall, I launched my first uh, production D8 site, including a migration of most of our content from our uh, D7 site, which is one of the first uh, times that had been done in production. And I'm Ryan Wheel. Um, I'm based in Montreal. I have a small consulting agency, and I've been traveling around the world a lot, um, helping people at sprints get started and working on Migrate. So I do uh, a lot of D7 Migrates in my day life. <laughs> yeah, Ryan has a travel problem, severe travel yeah. problem. To a, a <laughs> I'm lot taking of a break this summer, only one city, I yeah. think. There you go. <laughs> All right, so this is perhaps the most important slide. Is I think it's important for us as far as some of the later slides to know who we're talking to. Um, so if we can do a show of hands, um, how many people are contrib or custom module developers? All right, fantastic. And then how many people have um, uh, cracked open D8 and looked at, okay, fantastic. How, how many people are familiar with uh, D8 plugins? All right, few less. All right, good shape, good shape. How many uh, people have actually coded in D8? Okay, there are a few less. <laughs> yeah. And then I, I'm, we're going to assume there's some people here who just migrate curious, who are familiar with the D7 migrate module but haven't really looked into the D8 migrate module and are just trying to, you know, using this as, you know, kind of that first, you know, step into D8 migrate. Can you raise your hands again? All right, good. So it's about 50-50, right? Maybe a little 60-40. And then anybody in the wrong room? Because now's your chance. We won't judge you. All right, No. Fantastic. All right, so let's do a little background. Let's get everybody up to speed real quick. Um, so Migrate and the Drupal Drupal data migration modules have been completely rewritten and moved to D8 core. So if you're familiar with the Migrate and Drupal Drupal data migration modules in D7, um, what we're going to be talking about today is you'll see that the, you know, these modules are radically different um, from a code standpoint and from uh, a scope standpoint in D8. Um, but conceptually, as you'll see, a lot of the same concepts apply. So, and I'll just give you a little preview. If you're familiar with D7 Migrate, you know, you have to set a source, you have to set a destination, you do your field mappings, and then maybe you want to massage the data. We still have all those same concepts. I guess it would be hard to do a migration if you didn't have those same concepts. In some cases, we call them different things. Um, but they have analogs in D8. Um, the big change, and hopefully everyone in this room you know, knew this coming in, is that D8 migrate modules handle configuration as well as content. And that's ginormous. Um, that means that we basically can point migration, D8 migration at a full D6 site and our destination D8 site can be blank, and we're going to migrate content types and fields and field settings and blocks and block settings, and you name it. It's, you know, if it's in D6 core, 
CCK, link, email, phone, there might be a couple other modules, uh, user and node reference, might be a couple other modules. If it's in those modules in D6, well, we can get it into D8. We also bring in the IT&N modules that were in Contrib because those modules are essentially now in core, so we reach back into those as well. So there's some exceptions that are actually outside of core that you wouldn't expect that are also there. Right, so that's, that was a huge change um, and a lot, and frankly, a lot of work to you know, migrate configuration into, into um, a D8. All right, so if you, you know, clone D8 or download one of the betas and crack open core slash modules, you'll see the two migrate modules. So Keith, you want to talk about the current status? Right. Uh, so most of the work for the D6 to D8 migration path is done. Uh, we're working on mostly bug fixes at this point. Um, that is something that we're definitely looking for people to help test. If you have a D6 site, um, go ahead and launch a D8 site and give it a try and uh, file bug reports for anything that you find. Uh, for D7 to D8 migrations, uh, that work is just getting started. Um, we have some of the plugins written uh, to this point. Um, we still have some work to do. Uh, the good news is that a lot of the Plugins that we've already written for the D6 to D8 migrations will be reusable for the D7 to D8 migrations. Uh, if we've, and if we've done our jobs right, uh, many of the, the source plugins for the D6 to D8 migrations will be, the ones for the D7 migrations will be similar, so we shouldn't have to reinvent the wheel on those. Uh, as far as the UI for migrate, uh, it's not in core yet. The core migrate modules as they exist now, um, the primary means for running them is through Drush. There are two uh, contrib modules in the works for the UI. There's the migrate upgrade module, uh, which will contain a basic UI for running migrations. And then a more sophisticated UI is in the works in a module called Migrate Plus, which will be similar if you've used the Migrate Contrib module in D7, the UI for that, for the Migrate Plus D8 module will be similar to what you're used to from the D7 Migrate module. Yeah, I think it's fair to say that Migrate Upgrade module is gonna mimic the current like D6 to D7 upgrade page where you just enter in database credentials, um, but then Migrate Plus, as Keith said, is the analog of the Migrate UI. All right, and then uh, there are some other uh, advanced features like uh, rollbacks that uh, are not in core yet. And statistics and things like that, but there's, there's issues for all that stuff and progress being made. Mm -hmm. um, and then the status of how you can get involved uh, we're going to be sprinting tomorrow and Saturday. Uh, that can be, you know, you're welcome to come in and try out, test out D6 to D8 migrations, uh, or work with us on writing some plugins for D7. Uh, we have an IRC channel, Drupal Migrate, uh, that we uh, use for discussing all things Migrate, and also a, a Drupal group, uh, you can see the URL there. Uh, IMP stands for import. Took me a couple of weeks before I figured that out. So. And uh, there's a weekly call that's listed on that page. I believe it's Wednesday evenings in North America. 6 so. p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern. I think it's 1 UTC. Yeah, so Google Hangout, welcome to join just to get the status or, you know, ask questions, etc. All right, very good. So obviously, why do we do all this? Uh, so it can be extensible, right? Um, obviously, old, the old core upgrade path was not extensible. It either worked for your small brochure site or you were using the migrate module or rebuilding or something else. So uh, one of the main points of all this is we need an extensible migrations. 
Um, so the primary means of extending it is with plugins. So it, when we asked before, it looked like a lot of people were familiar with plugins, so we're not going to dive too deep into it, but just, you know, plugins are, in D7 migrate, you would write a new migration class. Um, plugins are classes as well. We're not writing new migration classes. We're doing something slightly different, but it's, um, they're just D8 plugins. So if you understand the plugin system, then you should be good to go. Um, and the idea is that if you manage a custom or contributed module, you should be able to write plugins as part of your module that can handle data that your module manages. Um, so as an example, if you manage, you know, module X, and when, when you go and port that module to D8, as part of the code included in your module, you might include, we would love for you to include, actually, um, the necessary um, migration plugins that allow people to migrate data from previous versions of your module in D6 or D7 to D8. All right, so when we talk about migrations, um, there's a lot of different types of data migrations that we can talk about. So let's just, we, we kind of um, very loosely put them into buckets. And the easiest one to understand is probably what we call a variable migration. If your module is not doing anything more than storing stuff in Drupal Core's variable table, um, you can write a migration to map your D6 variables or D7 variables into D8. You can change the name of the variables. You can combine variables if you need to. But um, it, it's kind of the simplest case where you have all your module does is, you know, store variables in D6 or D7. You want to get those variable values into D8, you know, relatively easy um, to write. Um, next up on the scale is what we call field migrations, and this is if your module, you know, declares a new field type. You know, fields are a little bit more complex because you've got field configuration, you've got field instance, you've got widgets, you've got formatters, and you have your field data as well. So there's a bunch of things that actually would need to be migrated from older versions of Drupal into uh, D8. And then entity, entity type migrations. If your module defines a new entity type, then, you know, that's a bit more of a complex migration where you have to move, you know, entity data, entity configuration data as well as entity uh, value data from one to the other. Um, and then the other, like the everything else bucket. If your module defines its own database table and provides CRUD for your own database table, then you'd have to provide a migration to go from whatever your data structure is on D6 or D7 to whatever your new data structure is on D8. Um, so today we're going to talk about field migrations because it's not the easiest, it's not the most difficult, it's not potentially, a, you know, an edge case where you're managing your own data, um, and it actually provides a really, it gives us a nice opportunity um, to show how migrations work conceptually and how to extend them a little bit. Um, so for field module migrations specifically, when we want to migrate a field, from an example we're going to do today is a D6 field into D8, we actually have to run a bunch of migrations. It's not just one migration. There's actually six migrations that are involved. There's the field migration, which is the base field. There's the field instance, which is relatively, usually we don't even have to do anything special for that because um, that's usually just a reference to the entity that it's attached to. Um, there's the widget, the formatter. So those four migrations handle kind of the configuration of the field you know, what content types it's attached to, what the settings are for the field, what widget and formatters to use. And then there's the values, the data that actually gets stored in that field. That needs to be migrated as well, as well as the revisions, uh, the data revisions. So um, for field migrations, it's not, you know, super simple, but it's not the most difficult thing we can do. Um, luckily, the way the migrate module is written and just the nature of, of some of these migrations uh, for most of the time, you really only have to worry about four of these. Um, field instances are basically, as I said, just a reference to an entity. Um, and field revision values, again, um, are just basically a, a simple lookup table. So unless your field level module is doing something really wacky, um, the base implementation of these is, is normally fine, and you don't have to even, we won't even look at either of these uh, moving forward here today. All right, so let's talk about what a migration configuration looks like. 
And this is kind of, you know, right, we were just talking, and this is conceptually kind of the biggest shift that um, people familiar with Migrate are going to have to make. Where in D7, when you're using the Migrate module, you create a new migration class. Um, say you want to migrate um, a content type from one place to the other. That's a new migration class. In D8, we, have all, we, we basically have one migration class called Migrate Executable. And to create a new migration, we pass it a different configuration. So as an uh, example, in D7, you would have, you, you uh, create a new class, and you declare the source, the destination, the map, and all your field mappings. Well, in D8, source, destination, field mappings, that's all configuration. So to create a new migration, really all we have to do is just extend or write a new YAML file, theoretically. Theoretically, we'll say. Um, so the work we're going to do today, the example we're going to show you, is not creating a new migration. It's creating a class that injects new configuration. So I know that's a little conceptually, it's hard to understand, so I'm going I'm to show you in a second. But the nice thing about this is, is that conceptually, it's very similar if you've used Migrate in D7. We have to define the source. We have to define the field mappings and any data massaging. In D8, we call that process. And we have to define the destination. So if you're familiar with Migrate and D7, these are not foreign concepts. These are the direct analog. So let's real quick, let's take a look at this, this configuration file for, for D6 field. Um, and that's what this is. So. so you can, I, just a second. Yeah. You can find this in the uh, core Migrate Drupal folder if you're interested to follow along. So I'm not, we're going to go line through line for this, so no. Um, let's just break this file up in, into groups. It's standard, you know, it's D8 YAML. But we basically have the metadata that describes the migration. We have our source with our source plugin. And similar to a D7 migrate, what does the source plugin do? It defines the query that gets the data from the source database. So that's all this plugin is doing. And then if we go to the very bottom, we define where is this data going to end up. In this case, it's going to be field storage config. Everything else we see in the middle here, under process, these are our field mappings, as well as any custom process plugins, or any process plugins, I should say, that allow us to mess with the data. So this, is, this kind of combines field mappings with prepare row. Um, and the best way to think about this process is in a pipeline. You know, on one end, we have the source. And the data comes in the source, you know, row by row. And then we can define different operations on that data as it goes through the pipeline. And those operations are defined in here. Um, and we're going to talk about the static map here for a second. So this, we're going to go into the weeds just for a minute, so, so bear with me. Um, the source provides us some data. Two of the fields the source provides are the, the type of field and the widget type. So this is directly from D6. And all this plugin is doing is basically it's a, it's a big lookup table. It's saying if the field type coming in, in D, from D6 is number integer and the widget is number, then the D8 field type is going to be integer. So static maps are just very simple lookup tables. We have a, a, you know, a number of process plugins already built. Um, we have them to deduplicate. We have them for more special purpose. I know blocks have a bunch of them. Um, the and simplest other are like upper uppercase and lowercase. Right. So there's easy ones to work with if you want cop to copy something. There's ones to turn things into machine names as well. Yeah. So uh, there's a, even a, a more sophisticated one to reference data imported by a, another migration. Right, and that's similar to the source migration um, method in D7. So let me, let me, let's get out of the weeds here and come back here. So for those of you familiar with D7 migrate, and this is really important for us because I know for us this is kind of 
once, we, once the light bulb came on for us for this, this is when we really started understanding what's happening with D8 migrate. Um, these configurations are like our old migration classes. Define the source, define the destination, and um, map your fields. I know in D8, I'm sorry, in D7 migrate, you also had to kind of define your map your, um, so you could track your source ID with your destination ID. That's kind of been built into the source. In the source plugin, you define your primary key. That's done on the destination side, so we kind of get the map for free. We don't have to define that separately anymore. Right, any questions about this part so far? Because this is key moving forward. If you're with me so far, we're, we're doing great. All right. So either, either we've explained it brilliantly or we've lost everybody. So <laughs> let's go with the former. All right, so we're going to dive a little bit, just a little bit, and kind of review. Um, so when we define the source, again, all this is literally doing is doing a query on our source table. And this is what we're looking at here. This is a source, um, a D6 content field node table that basically lists all the field types um, on this you know, D6 sample site we have. Uh, we're going to come back to this. Well, actually, let me, let me talk about it right now real quick. You see we have a, a field name field, a type, active. These field names map directly to our process functions. So the process functions kind of work just like in D7, or our mapping, I'm sorry, works kind of just like in D7, where it's the destination field and the source field. So for this particular migration, we're going to take the source active field and map that to the D8 status field. So if this field quote has a value of 1 on the source, then the D8 status for that field is going to be 1. So this is a very simple field mapping with no data man manipulation or massaging whatsoever. Um, when we do have to mess with data, that's where the, the process plugins come in. So type and widget type, these are source fields. So type and widget type is somewhere over here. Source fields coming in. If the source field, and we can even look at this one, so type text. If the type coming in is text, then the lookup table will say, okay, well, here's the type. And if the widget type is text field in D6, then the D8 widget, or well, then the D8 type is just going to be plain text. Still good? All right, fantastic. Um, so I don't even think I need to talk about this because I've, I've revisited this a couple times already. This pipeline is super important to you know, understand as far as how Migrate works. This is the right way to do prepare row. This is the right way to mess with your data. You mess with it while it's in the pipeline. Um, and the order of operations, oops, is defined strictly by, I think, do we have one down here? We don't have one down here, but um, is defined, defined strictly by this YAML. You know, this plugin's gonna be run first. It's actually run second because there's an implicit one, but if we wanted to do something more with the cardinality field, we just add a new plugin after this one. So if you picture it as a pipeline, get the data, process it with this, process it with this, process it with this, then it gets mapped to the destination field. And then finally, as in D7 migrate, you know, defining a new or defining what the um, what the destination is. Usually in D7 migrate, it's a one-liner. You know, migrate Drupal six node or Drupal six destination node. I forget exactly what the class is. Um, very similar. You know, we basically just tell it where is this data going to end up. And in this case, it's in field storage config. Everybody good? Still? Too fast? Too slow? Too loud? Too soft? More music? Less music? Okay. So the cool thing is, is that if you understand the last six or seven minutes, then you understand the basics of D8 migrate. Because the rest of these migrations that we're going to look at today, well, we're not, not even going to look at any of these other ones, barely. They work exactly the same. The source plugin gets the data. The process section of the configuration maps and messes with the data. The destination defines where that data ends up. Okay, so 
That's the conceptual part. That's the big picture, source, destination, mapping. Now let's apply it. So where are we on time? All right, not too bad. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this amazing module called iFrame. Is the iFrame maintainer here? Hopefully not. Okay. Because <laughs> it's awesome. I mean, look at this thing. So it provides, so this is the module we're actually going to build a migration class for, or we've actually already done it. We're just going to review it. What does the iFrame module do? Well, if you have a, a D6 site, you can create an iframe field that basically loads a URL into an iframe. Spectacular, right? I know you're with me on it. Here's how it looks. You know, you basically give it a title and a URL, and then we've got some information here about how it should appear. So for this example, um, we're going to move all of the data over, but we're not really going to do anything with the display stuff. Um, and we'll talk about why in a few minutes. So we're going to focus on, we're going to move the title and the URL. Well, when we move the title and the URL, that, that looks a lot like something familiar, right? That looks a lot like a link field to us. So what we're actually going to do for this example, whoops, I'm going to go to the right slide. We're going to migrate the D6 iframe field configuration into a D8 link field. Because it feels like the iframe module for D8 should really just utilize the link field type and have a custom formatter, where the custom formatter is what actually, is where you actually set things like width and height. So rather than having a different field type for iframe, let's, keep it, let's just make it a link field type because it kind of looks like a link. We'll just give link fields this, you know, a new formatter option, which is to output your link as an iframe. Everybody on board with that plan? All right, good. Um, we're not going to demo porting the entire module. Um, all we care about is the migration classes, and that's, that's all we're going to look at today. If anybody wants to take this and run with it and become the maintainer for iframe and D8, have at it. It's in the sandbox. All right, so big picture. What are we going to do? We're going to build migration classes that allow us to migrate from D6 to D8 an iframe field. So in my sample site right here, we have a D6 uh, site with very little. It has an iframe field attached to the story content type. Keep doing that, sorry. So as part of our migration, the story content type is going to get migrated over. Uh, the iframe field is going to get migrated over. And you're going to see it's you know, stupid easy to turn it into a, a field of type link. And then as far as the values, we're going to copy the title and the URL over. We actually are type copying the, the attributes over, but we're just kind of stuffing them into link field attributes and not even going to do anything with them. But um, this is what we're going to do. All right. So again, I'm going to ham I got to hammer home this other concept from earlier. We're not creating a new migration. Our class is not defining a new migration. Our plugin, I should say. I'm sorry. Our plugin, its job is to inject configuration into an existing migration. So, let me see, make sure. Oh, and actually, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, it would be possible to just go and export your configuration and change this directly. Um, it's kind of worth noting. So any of those YAML files that you see in Migrate Drupal um, are the defaults. If you were to do Drush config export, those will dump into your files folder. You could change those and then do config import. I, there's a user interface as well if you're familiar with CMI. Um, and you could re-import these. But that isn't really reusable on a module level if you want to include that in your contrib projects. Um, as well, you have to also consider that um, the, because the config is all coming in as part of migration and because we're already iterating through each of the fields on the node, we want to like catch that wave of activity that's happening there rather than redoing it. Um, in D7, this wasn't so much a problem because you would build all of your configuration manually and then you would just come in and run like a very flat migration and just pull stuff into whatever your new entity was. But in this case, um, the migration process is actually happening. It's, it's like spawning processes and managing the dependencies and dealing with all of that stuff automatically so you don't have to run around. So you don't want to do that? 
Yeah, nobody wants want dependency <laughs> management problems. So, um, so working with the system is a lot easier in this case. Right. So just to demonstrate what Ryan's talking about is, remember this this plugin is basically just looking at the entire D6 content node field table. That's full of fields and all types. And for every row, it looks at the field type, and I'm just going to focus on field type, and it's going to look up in this map. You know, are you a number integer? Are you a number decimal? If it's not in here, that field doesn't get migrated. So if we have an iframe field, iframe is not in here. So as Ryan was saying, we could do away with one of our migrations just by coming in here and adding, adding this. Technically, we're hacking core. Well, we're hacking configuration, right? So I don't know if that, maybe that's not the same as killing kittens. Maybe it's like, you know, I don't know. Something less evil than killing kittens. You're hacking, what's it? Oh. Ugly. I was thinking, okay, all right. I'm not sure that's any better, but, you know, I haven't, I don't, I haven't gotten to know you too, too well, so. Um, but you can see, if we just inject if these three, these two lines into this configuration, then when the field map, when the field um, migration runs, it'll find iframe, it'll know what to map it to. So the class that we write for the field migration, this is what it does. It just injects this configuration to, into the into YAML for us. It's probably also worth noting that it's not going to do anything special to this, though. It's just going to assume that all the fields or all the subfields or whatever are the same. So we will need to do some stuff, which we'll get to. But that's in the other migrations. Yes. Yes, that's yeah. in the, yeah, the other ones. Okay, so that's, you know, for D6, for the field migration, that's what our class does. It injects that into that configuration. So the way we're going to show it is the right way to do it, the way that we kind of design to allow um, module and contrib well module authors to extend um, migrate. Yeah, so insert stuff there. Okay, so um, I always forget what I'm talking about. Yeah, okay. So the other migrations work the same, just like we need to inject the mapping into the field migration. We need to inject some configuration into the field widget and we need to, about the field widget, and we need to inject some configuration mapping into the field formatter. <laughs> and we're gonna show how to do that in a second as well. Field values are a little bit different. What we're gonna show for that one is similar to the process row from D7. When the values from the iframe module or iframe field are coming in, we want to introduce a new plugin, a new process plugin, to mess with them before they get saved out to D8. So I feel that what we're showing here are some of the more common things that um, uh, module authors are going to have to do. All right, so everything is plugins. Um, up until about a week ago, it was a lot harder to do what I'm about to show you. Um, we, this commit came just in time um, for this. Uh, so. Anyway, we can do all of this with plugins now. Um, and so again, we're gonna go down in the weeds just a little bit. It's, it's possible to do this and we made it as easy as possible for you to do this. Uh, we have a base class called, and this is specifically for fields. Other migrations will all work uh, similarly. Um, we have an abstract uh, CCK field plugin base class that implements all of these methods. And for uh, the particular field we're working with, we only need to override the ones that have something, you know, some special sauce. Um, and there is a uh, CCK field, a migrate CCK field interface that kind of says you must have all of these methods. All right, so real quick, looking at the interface, and we're not going to go one by one through these, but you can kind of guess what each of them does. You know, these allow us to inject configuration into the YAMLs. So we have our field, we have our field instance, we have our widgets, and we have our formatters. And the other methods in the interface, uh, the first two here provide the map. You know, if in D6 the formatter was named this, then in D8 the formatter is named this. So you can have, you can change your formatter machine names on, into D8 and you can very easily map them from one to the other. You can get rid of one in D8 that you had in D6, you can add more in D8. Um, but the map is what, you know, kind of maps them from one side to the other. 
And then the process CCK field values, we're going to talk about this. This is where we get to de um, define, it's probably not the best word, declare our new plugin, um, our new pipeline plugin, that we're, where we get to mess with the actual field data on the way through. All right, so here's the plan. We're going to create um, one plugin called, uh, that we get to subclass uh, our base. And then we're going to create a second plugin, which is a custom process plugin, uh, in order to mess with the data. And the nice thing is they're both relatively short and easy to do. So everybody cool with kind of the big picture plan, what we're doing here so far? All right. Do we believe them? Do we believe them? Right? All right. Let's go with that. All right. So all this code I'm about to show you, it's in a sandbox. Uh, Benji, who's the, the big, one of the big brains of uh, Migrate and Core, is uh, in Australia. It's kind of a, a long trip. So that's where the name Benji comes from. All right, so let's look at this code. Now I get to use my new trick. Oh, actually, you know what? I do want to show one thing first before I show that trick. I do want to show that this module is relatively simple. Um, oh, now i got to go here. See, this is what I don't want to do. Okay, so I do want to just show here. So here is our module. Um, the info file, we'll see in a second, it's, there's nothing migration specific in there. It's just a, a simple standard D8 info file. And here is our, um, our, sub, our plugin, that subclass is CCK plugin base. And then here is our process plugin. Those of you familiar with D8 plugins know that all we have to do is just put them in, thanks to PSR4, we just put them in the right place and they will be found and utilized when they're needed. So there's no hook that we, like in migrate for D7, we had to implement hook migrate API and kind of declare them there. We don't have to do any of that in D8 with plugins. Plugins are, you know, the bomb. All we have to do is just put them in the right place and we're good to go. So if you're interested in creating these, you can always go into the migrate Drupal folder, look at what the folder structure is and just copy one that's close to what you want. But if you're using plugins for the first time, make sure to update the comments because the comments are annotations and the, those actually get processed and read. Right. Um, if you don't update the comment, it won't work. So fair warning. <laughs> yeah, there's a, there was a presentation. Anybody go to, I think it was Joe's presentation, 5 o'clock yesterday on DA plugins? Yeah. So if you were there, then this is going to be kind of uh, easy for you. He also did a series of blog posts. He's with Lullabot, I think, right? I think he's with Lullabot, and he, there's just he, a great series of blog posts about writing plugins. So if you need that background, it's out there, and it's, it's very good. So here's uh, for our, our custom uh, D8 module for our, mi our iframe migration classes is the info file. You know, nothing, nothing special there. All right, so let's look into our, um, our migration, well, I don't want to say our migration class, our plugin where it injects configuration. So as we said before, it is going to extend CCK field plugin base. We have to give it an ID, a plugin ID, so it's iframe. And we're going to spend time with this first one. And you can see this, that's the whole thing, so there's not a whole lot there. We're going to spend time with this first one because this is a little bit confusing, but if you get this one, then you get the other ones. So process field, this method allows us to inject configuration into that field or D6 field, where did it go? There, there. Inject configuration into this file. So that one little function is what's going to do the job of iframe. That's its job, is to inject this. So and I'm going to leave that there for a second, because we're going to come right back to it. So what we're going to do is we're going to, and this merge process of property, we're going to merge this thing, which we're going to talk about in a second, into the type configuration. So this is the name of the destination field, type. So if we come back real quick, oops, wrong one, first day with the new uh, trick, we're going to merge that configuration into the type process. All right? So what are we going to inject, inject into it? We're going to inject to the map. Our plugin ID is iframe. So map, iframe, iframe, link. That's the same thing as, oh, twice I didn't know, come on. 
That's the same thing as map, iframe, iframe, link. So it's this array structure that when you're looking at this file, this makes no sense until you look at the configuration. That makes sense? All right, so this, these two lines are doing the job of injecting that configuration for us. So process field works on D6, D6 field. Process field widget obviously works for our field migration. And I'm not going to go into detail on this one, but it's basically the same thing. It's going to inject into the options type process something that looks like type, map, iframe, link default. So we're going to make the default widget in D8 map to the link default widget because there is no iframe default in D8 because we're moving it over to the link field. Um, there's a third one that we actually don't even need to implement for process field formatter because that's very generic looking because that just takes a map and does our, our mapping. So we have to give it the map. And that's what this get field formatter map does. This basically says if the formatter on the D6 side is default, make the formatter link on the left side. On, no, I'm sorry, on the D8 side. If it's iframe only in D6, set it to link in D8. So if one of you were so lucky to be able to create a custom formatter for this module, you would probably want to map some of these not to link, but to your custom formatter machine name. All right, so these three methods are all we have to do to migrate the field configuration for iframe fields from D6 to D8. This first one is, think of this as field base. We're just saying, hey, from now on, when we do this migration, iframe fields, guess what? You're now link fields. Field instances are just references, so we can, unless you're doing something really crazy, we can use the default implementation in the base class. Widgets, hey, guess what? When you are a, uh, an iframe widget in D6, you're now a link default widget in D8. Formatters, you know, we have our little map. Um, yeah, and those are the four. Those are the four on the configuration side. So this, for those of you familiar with D7 migrate, this is all new stuff. Because D7 migrate doesn't migrate this stuff, right? D7 migrates only content. This is all of our configuration. I've seen some people do this, but they have to write it themselves usually. Right. <laughs> and people don't share for some reason. <laughs> All right, so imagine there's a line in the sand, right, on, on this line. Everything above is configuration. Everything below, now we're going to deal with the values. You know, in our case, as an example, we're going to deal with, you know, how do we get this data from D6 to D8? All right, so in this case, we need to do a little bit of data massaging from D6 to D8. If we didn't, if the fields were mapped directly and there was no data massaging involved, we wouldn't need a process plugin. It'd be kind of like that active to status. In this case, we do have to mess with the data a little bit, so we want to inject a new process in that pipeline. So this is how we declare the process to the configuration. We basically say, hey, I'm going to, you know, there's going to be a new process plugin called iframe field. And that, that iframe field plugin is going to get three pieces of data. It's going to get the URL, it's going to get the title, it's going to get the attributes. And then all this guy does is basically puts it in the pipeline. It puts our process function, which I'm going to show you in a second, into the process pipeline for iframe fields. So this is the new prepare row. In this case, we're going to declare the plugin here. And this is what the plugin looks like. So we have a, um, a base implementation for our process plugin. We're just going to extend it. This is one of those comments that Ryan was talking about, the annotation. This is our ID, iframe field. This goes directly back to this ID right here. So by giving the annotation the other one and matching it up here, that's how it knows which one to run. So we, we basically have two plugins now. 
if we go back to the file structure, this is the second file that you saw there. Right. This is our process plugin now. And the process plugin normally has one method called transform. Think of this as your new process row. And transform literally takes data in on one end in the form of a value array and returns, you know, it on the other end. So for the next plugin. Or, in this case, after it returns here, the next step is to save it into entity field storage. So in this case, we're just going to list out the array into URL, title, and attributes. And we're, we're just going to map it. So the source value becomes URI and D8, the title to title value, and here's the sum total of our massaging. We basically just have to unserialize the attributes. So we can do a lot more stuff in here. In this case, it's very simple. But you know, what, what we're focused on for this example is the structure rather than the details of how we're actually going to massage the data. Make sense? We're good? Everybody excited about Migrate? All right, there's only you know, a few of us here tomorrow, so just be patient with us. Because I know you're all going to be sprinting tomorrow now because this is, you know, it's cool stuff. All right. Um, yeah, so I guess let's see an action, right? I guess that's the next step. There's not a whole lot more. There, there's really nothing else to it. As Ryan was saying, let me just go back and reinforce what he said there. Here's the process plugin. Plugin migrate process. Here's our, um, I'm going to call it configuration injection plugin, because I'm not going to call it a migration plugin, <laughs> despite the title of this session. <laughs> Ignore that. that. You know, nothing. All right, so it's, you know, this is for a real field migration, and it's, what, 100 lines of code maybe? You know, take away the comments and the spaces, and it's very compact. So we think, and I'll say we think Benji did, did his job because Benji's the one who designed all this. We just kind of eat it all up and, and use it. All right, so let's see an action. So again, as a reminder, here is our D6 site. You know, we've got a couple of nodes with iframe field. We're going to focus on this guy right here. Here is our D8 site. Um, I'm showing you this because uh, in the, on the D6 side, this is a story, content uh, type story. That's where our iframe field lives. So after the migration, we're going to have a new content type. Kind of like that one slide I showed you where we're going from D6 to D8. We're going to migrate the content type. And that new story content type is going to have an iframe field. And there's going to be a new node on the D8 side that is identical to this node right here. But it's obviously, it's not going to display it as an iframe because we haven't written a custom display formatter. It's going to display it as a link field on D8. That's our social contract. That's what, that's what I'm promising is going to happen. So live demo. So Ryan told me not to do this. <laughs> All right. But I'm, I'm doing it anyway. Because I haven't, I haven't, like, I haven't, changed, <laughs> yes, I haven't <laughs> changed anything on this system. How are we on time? All right. So, if, you know, we have 15 minutes if something goes wrong. Yeah. What could possibly go wrong here? All right. So what I've done so far, you can even look at my history here. I have, I did a fresh site install. So it's a fresh copy of D8. And then I enabled migrate Drupal and iframe. And iframe is our little custom module that I just showed you. Um, so I'm going to, and I've got it in my history, trash, migrate manifest. I'm not going to parse this, but this is the way. Is that big enough for everybody? I can make it bigger. I mean, we have the technology. So this is the way the migrate manifest command looks. And, um, migrate manifest is a little bit funky, but it basically um, we have, I think, is it 92 migrations or 92 migration configurations in migrate Drupal? Just like, I just say around 100. Around 100. Like I showed you six of them, right? That little image with the field, field instance. That was six. I think for D6 to D8, we have somewhere around 100, as Ryan says. If you do um, I'm not drush sure. config dash list okay. grep migrate, It'll show you. Yeah. You'll see, like, that's pretty much all that comes out of that command. So, right. so I'm not going to I'm not going to run all that. It'll it doesn't actually take that long. But I'm going to run this D6 manifest node. How's that? If I point like that, this is just a YAML file that just lists the migrations we want to run. 
So this lists d6 field, d6 field instance, field formatter, widgets, node, all of its dependencies. So it's a subset of all 92. There's maybe 20, eh, probably less than 20 that we're going to run. So we basically tell Drush, run this manifest. You know, we're in our Drupal 8 site, and we're going to point at the d6 site. So one of the other big wins we get from Migrate and Core is it works like Migrate. The source database is untouched. We're just reading from that. So you can run this against the live database as many times as you want. So we run this. And you can see the migrations that are running here. Boom. So filter format, user role, user. So these are all because they're dependent on nodes. You can't run nodes unless you have users for authors. You can't run users unless you have user roles. There's that little warning at the end. That's just a bug. So you can see that CCK field values page and story, the last two that were okay. So that's bringing field values for the page content type and field values for story content type over. So that last one that's listed hopefully brought over our iframe field data. All right, so against all odds, we now have a story content type with an iframe field. That's now a link. We come to content. We've got two. This is the one we're interested in. Let's look at edit first, because this is if something's going to go wrong, this is where it's going to go wrong. And there we go. There's our, our link text. <laughs> and then if we look at it, it doesn't, you know, whoever, uh, who's, did someone already volunteer to write that formatter? Was it? I thought I saw something. But your job is to, you know, turn this into a beautiful iframe. Because everybody loves iframes. I, I do have a recommend for this, actually. Um, there's a module simply called YouTube that works for <laughs> Drupal 8, and it's a field formatter for text field, and it's a good basis for um, yeah. creating a field formatter for the first time with a settings page and other and nice things field like Field formatters that. are just plugins. Yep. So it's you know if you want a first contribution to Drupal or just to get involved with something, you know this you know iframe module is not going to set the world on fire, but it'll give you a lot of good experience. So we'll say. Um, and I to be honest with you, I actually think there's a lot of modules. Um, since I've been working on this a long time, I, I have to stare at D6 sites for a while. There's remember embedded media field for D6. I believe that was just a type link as well with custom formatters. That's a great opportunity for a you know, potential module author to, or a contributor to just write the, new, the, write the formatters for D8. And to be honest, the migration classes are not going to be all that different from what we're looking at here. So, all right. Uh, did we cover everything? Are we ready for questions? Any gaping holes? We got seven minutes for questions. All right. Seven minutes. That means two questions. No, okay. So uh, line yeah. up at the mic. Yeah, please. If you have a question, go to the mic. And just so, some background on the three of us. There are definitely people in Migrate and Core who are a lot smarter than we are. <laughs> um, none of the, the main architects made it to DrupalCon, so they send in the scrubs. Um, <laughs> we are more of, the, and I think it's fair to say, we are more on the side of we kind of understand the architecture and we can use it. But if you have any high-level architecture questions, we might punt. So. If, if you know the answer and we don't, feel free to like put up Absolutely. your hand and run to the mic because Absolutely. that would be um, useful to get into the recording. So um, please make sure the mic is on. Yes. Great. Thank you. <laughs> so this is really awesome stuff. Um, I'm really excited to use it. Um, my question is, is, I want to know if there's a defined plan for when the migration to 7 will be available. Do we, I, I, I realize things are ready when they're ready. Do we expect at least 8.1? Um, it will likely be much sooner. Um, so the, the D6 mappings are in core now. Um, the differences between 6 and 7 are not that substantial. Um, I would expect that as people get working with it, it will proceed pretty swiftly once it's there. Um, there was a holdback for a while because it was in a sandbox that was out of date, and I believe that's been extracted now and is now under current development. So There's a patch available, and that's if you want to come tomorrow, that's a good opportunity. We need, I know that we know there's a lot of people who are kind of itching to help with the, D8, the, the D7 and D8 stuff, and we just haven't been ready. We are on the verge of being ready, and so if we can get that patch reviewed and get that first patch in, that's kind of the first domino. 
I would expect over the next few months. Yeah. So our goal has always been for 8.0, D6 to D8 migration, because D6 is being sunset, and that's the most important one. So we've really had blinders on. Um, and, and then really the, refers to the UI more than anything, because stuff's already in core. So yeah. and we expect the D7 to D8 stuff is going to be a fraction of the effort the D6 to D8 stuff was. So, yeah, so you're asking if we need, for a given field migration, if we need one plugin per thing we want to mess with. Is that what you're asking? No, because you get in, in, for a given migration, in the transform method, you get the data as it is in the pipeline. So if that field has, you know, 13 subfields, so to speak, or 13 uh, field values, you get access to all 13 of them, so you can mess with all of them in, in that one place. And I, I, do we want to mention, I mean, there is, you can still do prepare row in D8. We just, th what we showed you today is kind of what we feel is the best way to do it. It's kind of the, the, the there's so, a, I, air quotes, the right way to do it? Yeah, there is, I think it's a migrate.api.php file that contains an implementation of um, prepare row. And you can use that if you just want to use like a dot module file and do your D7 strategy of like dirty hacks. <laughs> <laughs> this way your mom will be impressed. So. Yes, yes to number two. Yep. No, we have that was yeah. um, migrate extras in Drupal 7 kind of had stuff like that. So I would imagine something like that will emerge. In well, the, but that's not considered best practice. Best yeah. practice is your module, the data that your module is responsible for should be in your module. The migration uh, configuration for that module should be in your module. And that's one of the... Yes, there would have to be. Yep. Right, but like you said... That module could just be very similar to what we just showed you. It's just putting it into a text field or something. It, it may be worth checking in to see if, if it's a widely supported module. There's been talk lately about putting um, some of these plugins into core modules as opposed to having them in Migrate. Um, that's a discussion that's happening now. Um, I think that's going to happen. So it may be worth checking in with some someone in the migrate Drupal room or something like that in IRC um, when you come to that point. So just as a quick addendum to that is, if I can just pull this up real quick. So you can see right now in core, and let me get rid of this because that's not good. Still in migrate core, we have all of these field types that are not plugins yet. This is tomorrow. Basically, if you want to come help us out tomorrow, if you followed what, I, what we did today, you can help us, you know, write migration um, configuration plugins for all of these. Because our goal is this, you know, this map should be empty for core. All of these should be implemented as plugins rather than this map. Just 
you know, put your shades down, lock the door, don't let anybody see you do it. But come on, we all, I mean, we all, you know, depending on the budget of the client, you know, sometimes that's what you have to do. Um, you know, the, the, the goal of this session was mainly to show there is a right way, a supported way of doing it. But as we showed you, you can also shortcut it just by messing with your configuration files. You're welcome. It's a wasteland. Uh, go into um, drupal.org slash project slash Drupal into the issue queue, filter it down by migration system. Um, Ping Ryan on IRC. That's the answer. Well, I, I, yeah. I'm often not in IRC if I'm not at Drupal cons or at events. So, um, but go into the migrate Drupal room and just ask in general, um, and someone in there will probably have an idea. Uh, there seems to be people around the clock, so... There's a patch that's in the queue right. that is, like I said, the first domino. And if you ping me or, or Kata Chan or Benji or anyone, we will point you to that issue. And depending on the current status of you, we, status of it, we might have you, you know, test it or extend it or something. But once that domino falls, then we've got. You can look in the issue queue right now. There's a lot of kind of almost empty issues. They're not empty. They have a title about. Let's write a configuration for this. Write a configuration for this. All of our, vari our missing variable migrations. So. All right. See you tomorrow? Maybe? All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Yes, it does. And revisions. The revisions come through by default because the promise has always been to bring data from your old system. So there's actually a couple little bugs that are worth noting. Um, if you at one point enabled the book module and then disabled it and you didn't bother enabling it in D8, the migration system at this point wants to grab that data because you have data there. So um, just a fair warning that if you have a module that you installed at one point that you don't use anymore, you may wish to consider to 